we are back in the back garden. It's a lovely day and today I'm going to bring you a video of a difference. I had quite a few requests and questions about personal protection gear, what to wear, brands, models. Over the years I have tested my pads to the limits. Obviously wearing pads is personal preference. Loads of guys rip without pads. Loads of guys wear pads. My reference for skating is the 80s and those guys were on vert wearing loads of pads. When I started skating I thought, well, yeah, I'll get myself a set of pads. First set of pads I bought with a 30 pound all in set of pads. Got down a skate park. I thought, oh, these probably won't be quite substantial enough. So I did a bit of research and started to get some better, bigger pads. My reason for wearing pads is I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate. I thought I'm gonna be falling off a lot and I also realized I really like skateboarding. I didn't wanna miss any sessions through injuries. So impact injuries, pads really help. Obviously twisting ankles, twisting knees, you can't really guard against that and I've had my fair share of those type of injuries as well. But in terms of falling off and going splat, Pads on the elbows, the knees, the ankles, etc. They tend to really help in my experience. Let's go from the feet to the head in order. I'll take you through what I wear and then you can leave in the comments below if you found better options, options you prefer. This is all personal preference, so these are only my things that I use. There are no way the right things for you. Okay, skate shoes. I like to wear the Vans Caballero series. These are the full cabs. These are the half cabs. The full cabs are quite hard to come by. They tend to get released in limited runs, whereas the half cabs are always available. I prefer to wear the full cabs for the added ankle protection, but these ones have just totally given out and I've had to finally call it a day. I've been repairing them, adding extra bits on the bottom. This is through to the insole. With the shoes as well, I also like to add a little bit of tape earlier rather than later, just to protect the stitching so that they don't come undone. I find that if I take them before I ride them, the uppers will long outlast the bottoms. Here, this bottom is already starting to give. And as you can see on these ones, I've sort of put extra bits of rubber and shoe glue on here to try and keep these going. But I find that I go through the bottoms way quicker than the tops. But taping this with Gorilla Tape on the top tends to really help keeping these bad boys going. So that's the shoes. Leave a comment below your favorite shoes and why. Next up, we've got the ankle protector. These are Fuse ankle protectors. They've got hard ankle bits on. And then on the back, I've souped up the Achilles protection with a bit of D30 padding. This orange padding is the stuff they use for iPhone cases. And it's soft and malleable, but when it's hit, it goes hard and provides loads of protection. So this bad boy, sits inside the half cab. I do the shoes up nice and tight and that adds a bit of ankle protection round here. For some reason my board seems to have a honing device on my ankles and my Achilles. Whenever I jump off a trick, come off of something, it tends to just come straight down, whoo, knife straight into the Achilles or into the ankle. I soon got bored of that so I came up with this solution of the ankle protector and the extra Achilles protection. This just gives me a bit more confidence when the board does hit, it's not gonna to totally wreck my ankles and cause me to have some time off. The next part of the equation is the sock. I use the footprint painkiller sock. I take out the ankle protection that comes in the sock because it's not the best and it's not the best situated. It sort of doesn't really sit on the ankle for some reason. Unpick the stitching and then inside, we've got this shin pad, again made out of this impact foam. And that 
protects all of the shin and I find that the shin also gets a lot of boards on and also when you're sliding, hitting the coping, oh my gosh, bit of sock, bit of shin pad, bit of ankle support, half cabs up, this is all pretty supported. It won't stop an ankle roll, but hopefully all of the impact that the ankle and the shins might get, it helps with that. And I find this is quite a comfortable solution. Loads of grip from the van shoes on the board. Yeah. Okay, next point of contact is the knee. Woo! And there's my knee pad. I've supplemented my knee pad with a knee gasket. I made these gaskets myself. These knee supports are knitted knee supports and they wick the sweat away and they only cost like eight quid on Amazon so they're nice and cheap. I originally went for the Killer 187 knee gaskets but I just found that this neoprene material was way too sweaty and it also moved around quite a lot. So I just cut the pad off of the 187 neoprene and then sewed it onto these nice knee supports from Amazon. I find this really good knee support. The pads themselves are the Killer 187 Pros. I did a bit of research after using my rubbish 30 pound ones for a few weeks and I noticed that on the Vert series and also in the Bowl series a lot of them were wearing these 187 pads and that seemed like a good endorsement to me. This has got a lot of padding in it and also the cap that you slide on is replaceable this comes off and another cap goes on I think I'm on about my sixth set of sliding caps whereas the pad itself has lasted nearly two years and it's still going strong again a bit of gorilla tape on there try and keep it going as long as we can it's got a butterfly attachment which I also find is quite good because you can put all your shoes and everything on travel to the park and then just whack these on over the top of them to remove the shoe some cheaper pads have the neoprene over the back already attached and then you can't really get it on over your shoe so a better sort of more substantial knee pad usually has this butterfly attachment other brands are available smiths are a good brand i think also professionally designed uh, it seems to be very substantial as well so pick your flavor next point of contact is the hip Ooh, let me tell you i have had some hippers trying to learn to skate over the years oh not nice after my really big hip injury, I decided I was going to try and design something to stop that happening and give me some confidence. So I came up with these protective shorts. These originally are snowboarding shorts made by the Burton Snowboard Company. And they've got this G-form soft padding, again, very similar to the D30 padding. Stuff that I find cases are made of soft and then it goes hard when you hit it. The coccyx I've souped up with more D30 padding. You can buy this, this is Musto Skiff Sailing D30 padding that you can buy in sheets. I cut it up, Gorilla Tape, and it beefs everything up. And then for extra hip protection, these are hip protectors that they give to old people when they're gonna fall over and maybe break their hip. So this is about half an inch of D30. I thought, well, if it's gonna stop that happening, hopefully it will stop my hips shattering. Ooh. So I've just Gorilla Tape those on and that gives me a set of nice, breathable, soft shorts. They're very malleable because all of this pattern is really bendy and soft. But as soon as I fall off, bang, it hopefully goes hard and saves some of the injury. It still hurts, but it doesn't mean that you have to have the next day off of skating, which is the main thing. Over the top of these shorts, I wear my denim shorts, but these are stretch shorts. These are from Asda or Kmart if you're in America. And the stretch denim really gives you a little bit of comfort and maneuverability when you're bending your knees. And it also helps to bend over the pads, keep the pads in. I've tried to keep these bad boys going. As you can see, I've robbed the pocket in a sort of 70s repair the jeans fashion. So those are a set of stretch denim shorts that go over the top. Next point of contact, the elbow. So I've just gone for the Killer 187 Pro elbow pads. They match the knee pads. These don't come with replaceable caps. So I've gone through two sets of these just because these rivets wear away and then this cap comes off and there's not much you can do to save them. But they are really, really good. Loads of protection, Killer 187 Pro pads. Next up, we've got the wrist guard. We're getting there, it's a lot of pads. I use the Demon D30 pads. Again, this has got loads of D30. I've added extra D30. I'm a guitar player for a living, so wrists are a real worry for me. I just can't afford to break my wrists, so I've gone totally overboard with my wrist protection. 
I find these wrist pads are amazing because they've got the D30 in, really secure. They've got the slider on as well for sliding out of impacts. And then I've also fashioned a set of gaskets for my wrist pads just so they fit really nicely everywhere. This is a set of snowboarding wrist pads and I've taken the wrist support off of them so they just end up with a neoprene gasket. And I find that that neoprene gasket with the pad over the top gives you a really good amount of support and protection. Touch wood, I've had no issues as yet with the gasket and the D30 Demon pad. Okay, last bit of gear is the helmet. I use the Triple Eight Tony Hawk model helmet. This has got the sweat saver insert that you can take out, try and dry that bad boy. This soaks up all the sweat and then when it's full of sweat, you can push on the front of the helmet and all the sweat comes down. Nice, but it does mean that you can keep skating without all sweat in your eyes. I watched a video where Tony Hawk was relearning the 900 at like 48 years old. He bangs his head in the most horrific way a couple of times in that video. Seems to walk away, I thought that is a good test of the helmet and illustrates to me that it's a good choice so I just went and bought it. Obviously other options are available but a helmet essential for me, I'm always falling off. I have to say in a couple of years of skating I've only hit my head three or four times but I've been glad every time I've been wearing a helmet when that's happened, it's been quite unpleasant. You can also bet your bottom dollar that the day that you think I won't bother wearing my helmet is the day that you'll probably hit your head. So I just wear it every time regardless. Might not be the coolest thing, but there are some cool cats out there wearing helmets now. Leave it in the comments below, helmet or no helmet, your choice. Okay, that's it for the personal protection video. I had a lot of fun putting this one together. Obviously, I'm not affiliated to any of these brands. They're just things that I've found that work for me. This is personal preference. The rationale of wearing pads, try not to get injured when you're beginning. I think as you get more advanced, you could probably start losing the pads. I look forward to that day. The times I have gone without pads, I found it liberating. I found the adrenaline levels do go up. I can understand why you don't wear pads. There also is a necessity as a mother of invention level to wearing no pads. You're more likely to try and make something work because you don't want to fall off. So perhaps the progression could be quicker without pads, but then you've got to factor in getting injured and losing time from injury. As ever, my name's been John Bishop, and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate. Oh, 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 oh,